How does DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusiveness impact a nation's welfare and economy? This question is more pertinent now than ever. In our globalized world, DEI has taken center stage in conversations about societal and economic well-being. But what exactly is DEI? Diversity, equity, and inclusiveness are three interconnected principles. Diversity is about ensuring the representation of different groups, be it race, gender, religion, or socioeconomic status, in all sectors of society. Equity, on the other hand, is about leveling the playing field, ensuring everyone has equal opportunities to succeed. Finally, inclusiveness is about creating environments where everyone feels valued and heard. Now, at face value, these principles seem beneficial. Who wouldn't want a society where everyone is represented, has equal opportunities, and feels valued? But as with every concept, there are potential downsides to consider. One potential pitfall of DEI is the risk of overemphasizing differences. While celebrating our unique identities is important, there's a danger that we might focus too much on what sets us apart, rather than what brings us together. This could inadvertently lead to division rather than unity. Another concern is the possibility of reverse discrimination. In our pursuit of equity, we may end up favoring certain groups over others, which could lead to resentment and further division. This is not to downplay the importance of correcting historic injustices, but rather to highlight the delicate balance that needs to be struck. Lastly, there's the economic impact to consider. While diverse and inclusive workplaces have been shown to be more innovative and productive, there's also the potential for inefficiencies and conflicts as people from different backgrounds and perspectives try to work together. These potential downsides are not an argument against DEI, but rather a call for thoughtful implementation. It's about finding the right balance, where we celebrate our diversity, strive for equity, and foster inclusivity, without losing sight of our shared humanity and common goals. Let's delve into some real-world examples that illustrate these potential pitfalls. In the United States, affirmative action has been a controversial topic for decades. This policy, which was first introduced during the Kennedy administration in the early 60s, was designed to level the playing field by giving preferential treatment to groups who had previously suffered from discrimination. The goal was to promote diversity and redress imbalances in areas such as education and employment. But let's take a step back and look at the origins of affirmative action. It was born out of the civil rights movement, a time when discrimination was not just prevalent but institutionalized. The intention was noble, to counteract the effects of long-standing discrimination and to ensure equal opportunities for all, regardless of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. However, like many well-intentioned policies, affirmative action has faced its fair share of criticisms. One of the most prominent critiques is the potential for reverse discrimination. Critics argue that by giving preferential treatment to certain groups, other individuals may be unfairly disadvantaged. There's a concern that it might create a zero-sum game, where one person's gain is another's loss. Another point of contention is the potential reduction in standards. Some argue that affirmative action can lead to less qualified individuals being chosen over more qualified ones, solely based on their membership in a certain group. This, they say, can compromise the quality of institutions or companies that implement such policies. Moreover, affirmative action can foster resentment between different groups. There's a risk of perpetuating a divisive narrative of us versus them, where them are perceived as undeserving beneficiaries of a biased system. This can in turn exacerbate social tensions and undermine social cohesion. In sum, while affirmative action was born out of a desire to redress historical injustices and promote diversity, it's not without its challenges. It's a complex issue that requires thoughtful consideration and nuanced discussion. This case demonstrates how well-intentioned policies can sometimes have unintended consequences. In Europe, gender quotas are a common practice to promote gender equality. These quotas are designed to ensure that both genders are equally represented in various sectors, particularly in those traditionally dominated by one gender. The intent is noble. After all, who wouldn't want a balanced representation of our diverse society? However, as with any policy, it's essential to examine its practical implications. One of the most common criticisms of gender quotas is the risk of tokenism. Tokenism is the practice of making only a perfunctory or symbolic effort to include underrepresented groups to give an appearance of equality. With gender quotas in place, 
there's a risk that individuals might be chosen for their gender rather than their qualifications, leading to a perception of these individuals as tokens. Furthermore, critics argue that gender quotas may undermine the principle of meritocracy. In a meritocratic system, individuals are selected based on their abilities and qualifications, not their gender. By enforcing quotas, the emphasis shifts from ability and qualification to gender, which can potentially compromise the quality of output or performance. Additionally, such policies can inadvertently breed resentment among those who feel they've been overlooked due to their gender. This resentment can create a less than harmonious work environment, potentially leading to decreased productivity and morale. These criticisms are not to dismiss the importance of gender equality or the need for representation. However, they highlight the potential pitfalls of implementing such policies without careful thought and consideration. It's a delicate balancing act, one that requires ongoing discussion, research, and refinement. In conclusion, while gender quotas in Europe aim to promote gender equality, they are not without their drawbacks. Like any policy, they require careful implementation and regular review to ensure they are serving their intended purpose without causing unintended harm. This case illustrates the potential downsides of implementing DEI policies without careful consideration. Scene script. Conservatives often express skepticism towards DEI. Why is that so? Let's delve into some of the common conservative criticisms of diversity, equity, and inclusivity. One argument often voiced is the concern that DEI undermines meritocracy, the belief that power should be vested in individuals almost exclusively based on ability and talent. The fear is that prioritizing diversity could lead to less qualified individuals being chosen over more qualified ones, simply to fulfill diversity quotas. This could potentially compromise the quality of work, productivity, and overall performance in various sectors of the economy. A second criticism is the potential for fostering division rather than unity. The argument is that by highlighting differences and categorizing individuals into specific groups, we risk creating an environment of us versus them. Instead of fostering unity, it could inadvertently sow seeds of division, counteracting the very essence of inclusivity. Yet another concern is the overemphasis on differences. The conservative perspective often values the commonality of human experience and shared national identity. They argue that by focusing too much on what sets us apart, we may overlook what binds us together. This could potentially lead to fragmentation and a lack of social cohesion. Furthermore, critics argue that DEI initiatives can sometimes inadvertently lead to a form of reverse discrimination where the majority feels marginalized. This, they believe, can create resentment and further deepen societal divisions. These concerns, however, do not necessarily mean that conservatives are against diversity, equity, and inclusivity as concepts. Many conservatives argue for a different approach towards achieving these goals, one that emphasizes individual merit and shared values over group identities. In summary, the conservative skepticism towards DEI stems from concerns about undermining meritocracy, potentially fostering division, overemphasizing differences, and the risk of reverse discrimination. It's important to understand these perspectives, even if we don't necessarily agree with them. Understanding these viewpoints allows us to engage in more nuanced and productive discussions about how to best achieve a balanced, fair, and cohesive society. So, does DEI always lead to better outcomes for a nation's welfare and economy? It's a question that has been the undercurrent of our discussion today. We've traversed the landscape of affirmative action in the United States, gender quotas in Europe, and the conservative perspective on these matters. Now, as we draw our conversation to a close, let's take a moment to tie these threads together. At the heart of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusivity, lies a noble intention. It's about creating a society where everyone, regardless of their race, gender, or background, has an equal shot at success. But as we've explored, the road to achieving this is fraught with complexity. In the United States, affirmative action policies were designed to level the playing field, and they have indeed opened doors for many who might otherwise have been left behind. But they've also sparked concerns about reverse discrimination and the potential erosion of meritocracy, concerns that are shared by conservatives across the nation. Across the pond in Europe, the introduction of gender quotas has helped increase representation of women in leadership roles. But it's also raised questions about whether these quotas truly promote equality, or if they simply impose a different kind of imbalance. And this brings us to the crux of the conservative skepticism. It's not that conservatives are against the principles of DEI, 
Rather, they question the methods used to achieve it. They argue for a society where opportunities are available to all, but where those opportunities are earned through merit, not assigned through quotas. In conclusion, while DEI aims to address societal imbalances and foster a more inclusive world, it's essential to consider the potential downsides. The pursuit of diversity, equity, and inclusivity should not come at the cost of fairness and meritocracy. While DEI is a noble goal, it's crucial to implement it in a way that promotes unity rather than division and upholds the principles of fairness and meritocracy.